We now learn about synthetic division of polynomials, and we're going to do so with some examples. The first is the one we see here. We're asked to use synthetic division to divide f of x, which equals 2x to the power of 5 plus 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 5, by g of x, which is a linear function, which equals 2x minus 2. All right, to begin with, let me move the question to the side, like so, and now we can get started. To divide f of x by g of x using synthetic division, we can follow two steps. The first step, step 1, is to find the value of x at which g of x, which is x minus 2, equals to 0. In other words, we need to start by solving g of x equals to 0, which is x minus 2 equals to 0. And it doesn't take us long to see that this will equal to 0 when x equals to 2. And that's our first step done. We now move on to step 2. And in step 2, we need to evaluate this polynomial function f of x when x equals to 2. That's the value we just found in step 1. To do that, we use the nested scheme, which is also known as Horner's algorithm. And for that, we draw a table like the one I'm drawing now. To get things all set for our table, we need to look into the coefficients we see inside our polynomial function. So starting with the leading term, we have x to the power of 5, which is being multiplied by 1. Indeed, even though we don't write 1x to the power of 5, when it's written this way, the coefficient is 1. So we write it at the top of our table, like so. Moving on, we see that we don't have an x to the power of 4 term. This means that the x to the power of 4 coefficient is 0, so we make sure to write that as well. We carry on, we have 2x to the power of 3, so we write 2 at the top of our table. We then have negative 3x squared, so we write negative 3. We then have negative 4x, so that's negative 4 at the top of our table. And finally, we have a plus 5 at the end here, so I go ahead and write 5. Now on the left-hand side of our table, we write the value of x at which we're evaluating the polynomial. So that's this number here, that's 2. So I write 2 at the upper left-hand side of our table. We're now all set. So we start by carrying down this 1 all the way to the bottom of the table, and I write it at the bottom here. And now I multiply this 1 by the 2 that we have on the left-hand side. 2 times 1 equals to 2, and I write that at the bottom of the next column in the table. I now add this 2 with the coefficient which is directly above it, that's 0, and so 0 plus 2 is equal to 2, which I write at the bottom of the table. And I repeat this process. I multiply 2 by the 2 on the left-hand side, and 2 times 2 is 4, so I write that at the bottom of the next column. I now add this 4 to the coefficient that's directly above it, so 2 plus 4 equals to 6. Carrying on this way, we have 6 times 2, which is equal to 12, and I write that in the next column, and we add 12 to the coefficient above it, which is negative 3. So that's negative 3 plus 12, which is equal to 9. And now starting over for 9, we have 9 times 2, which is equal to 18. Adding 18 to the coefficient above it, that's negative 4, we have negative 4 plus 18, which equals to 14. Finally, I multiply 14 by 2, and 2 times 14 is 28, and adding this 28 to the coefficient above it, that's 5 plus 28, which equals to 33. And at this stage, the bulk of the work is done. Indeed, everything we need is at the bottom row of this table. And here's how it works. This 33 that we have at the end here is the remainder we obtain when dividing f of x by g of x. The numbers that we have here though, this 1, 2, 6, 9, and 14, are the coefficients of the quotient polynomial we get when dividing f of x by this linear g of x. So using the coefficients that we see here, we can go ahead and state that the quotient polynomial q of x will equal to 1x to the power of 4, so that's just x to the power of 4, plus 2x to the power of 3. So I write plus 2x cubed, plus 6x to the power of 2, which I write here, plus 6x squared, plus 9x, so I write that as well, plus 9x, and finally, plus 14. So I write that at the end here, plus 14. And that's what synthetic division is all about. 
Using Horner's method, we've evaluated this polynomial at the value of x at which g of x, the linear function we are dividing it by, equals to zero, we can quickly obtain all the coefficients of the quotient polynomial as well as the remainder. And to write our final answer, we can state that f of x divided by g of x equals to the quotient polynomial, so that was x to the power of 4 plus 2x cubed plus 6x squared plus 9x plus 14 plus the remainder, which remember was 33, over x minus 2, which is nothing more than the linear function g of x. To be clear, this 33 is the remainder, that's the value we obtained at the very end of our table here, and the polynomial that I'm currently underlining in red is the quotient polynomial, whose coefficients are all of the numbers we see here in our table that I underlined in red. And the good news is, this method will always work so long as we're dividing a polynomial function by a linear function which can be written as x plus c. In other words, as soon as we're dealing with f of x divided by x plus c. Now careful, when I say this, I'm highlighting something quite important. The x coefficient must equal to 1. If it's not equal to 1, we'll need to add a step to the method we've just used. And in fact, we learn that step in our next tutorial. But for now though, we've covered all the basics that we need to know to carry out synthetic division. And if you want, you can stop watching this tutorial now. We've covered everything we'll learn here. But if you want to work through another example, stay right here to see me work through example two. In this second example, we're asked to use synthetic division to divide f of x, which equals to 4x to the power of 4 minus 2x cubed plus 7x plus 10, by g of x, which equals to x plus 1. And in fact, why not press pause right now and try solving this for yourself? Okay, so I'll start by moving this to the side, like so, and now we can get started. So the first thing we need to do, step 1, is to find the value of x at which g of x, that's x plus 1, equals to 0. In other words, we need to solve g of x equals to 0, that's x plus 1 equals to 0, which we quickly solve and find x equals to negative 1. And that's our first step done. We move on to step 2, and in step 2 we need to evaluate this polynomial when x equals to negative 1. That's the value we just found. We do this using the nested scheme, also known as Horner's method, and for that I make a table like the one I've just drawn there. Now to complete the table, I look at the coefficients I find inside this polynomial function. So the leading coefficient here is 4, so I write that, 4. I then have negative 2 in front of my x cubed, so that's negative 2. I can see that we don't have an x to the power of 2 term, that means that its coefficient is 0, and careful, you want to make sure you write that. We then have 7x, so the coefficient is 7, and finally we have a plus 10 at the end here, so that coefficient is 10. Now, on the left-hand side of this table, we write down the value of x at which we're evaluating the polynomial. So in this case, that's negative 1. So I write that negative 1. We're now all set. I start by carrying down the 4 at the bottom of this table, so that's 4 here. And now, 4 times negative 1, well that's negative 4, so I write that at the bottom of the next column. I now add this negative 4 to the coefficient directly above it, so that's negative 2. And that's negative 2 plus negative 4, which leads to negative 6. I now repeat the process. Negative 6 times negative 1, which equals to 6. I now add this 6 to the coefficient above it, so that's 0 plus 6, which equals to 6. I carry on this way, I multiply this 6 by negative 1, so negative 1 times 6 equals to negative 6, which I write at the bottom of the next column. I now add this negative 6 to the 7 that's above it, leading to 7 plus negative 6, which is equal to 1. I now multiply 1 by negative 1, which leads to negative 1 that I write at the bottom of the next column, and finally I add this negative 1 to the coefficient above it, so that's 10 plus negative 1, which equals to 9. The 9 that we've obtained here is the remainder we get when dividing f of x by x plus 1, 
and the numbers 4, negative 6, 6, and 1 are the coefficients of the quotient polynomial we get when we divide f of x by x plus 1. Now, since f of x was of degree 4, indeed the highest x power was x to the power of 4, dividing it by a linear, whose highest power is x to the power of 1, will lead to a cubic, whose coefficients are right here. In other words, the quotient function q of x equals to 4x cubed minus 6x squared plus 6x plus 1. And we can state our final answer as f of x divided by g of x equals to q of x, so that's 4x cubed minus 6x squared plus 6x plus 1 plus the remainder, which is 9, over x plus 1. To be clear, the 9 that we have on this fraction is the remainder, and that's the one I highlighted in green at the bottom of our table. And this cubic polynomial that we have here is the quotient function, whose coefficients are found at the bottom of the table. And there we have it. That's the end of our first tutorial on how to divide polynomials by linear functions using synthetic division. In our next tutorial, we're going to learn how to divide polynomials when the linear function we're dividing by is of the type ax plus b, where a isn't equal to 1. So do make sure to watch it. For now though, that's it for this tutorial.